gotta help me out. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, the thing must be gone by now. All right, so we have the edges down here, regular hexagon. They're all eight. The lateral edges, which are not extremely helpful directly for either the volume or the surface area, are 20. And I'm supposed to find things like A to G. Well, that looks a lot like slant height. I just want to draw one of these faces. I know uh, I'll draw A, D, E. And I know these are both 20. I know this whole thing is 8, and I'm looking for A to G, which is here in the middle, and there's a right angle. So each of these is 4, and I have a right triangle here with a 20 and a 4 in it, so I use, um, I'm going to call that L even. I know that L squared plus 4 squared is supposed to be 20 squared. With the calculator, I find out that that's supposed to be the square root of 384 which is not pretty. The square root of 384 is, eh, 384, that's a nice looking 3, isn't it? It's about 19.6, which is really close to 20, but it's really not 20, it's less than 20. It's 20, I mean, if it's only got a little uh, leg here of 4, that's going to be pretty close to 20. So yeah, this is the square root, you know what I said, leave these in simplified form if you can, or, you know, exact form if you can. Uh, 384 should have some square factors, though. 384 divided by 4, yep, divided by 4 again, yep, divided by 4 again, yep. Um, so it turns out that this is 8 times the square root of 6 from my calculations. Okay. Um, so now we're supposed to find AF. AF is the straight up height. Okay. Um, you can do that a couple different ways. I think I'm going to use the triangle AFE. I could go AFG also. Uh, I'm going to do AF. Okay, because I'm probably going to need all that stuff eventually anyway. AFE is a right triangle. I know AE is already 20. It was the same AA I used here. This AF, I don't know. I'm going to call that H. F to E, now this is the radius of a regular hexagon. The radius of the regular hexagon is the same as the side, remember, because regular hexagon looks like three equilateral, sorry, six equilateral triangles like this. These are all the same, and these distances from the center to the corners like that, that's the same as the side. So that's also eight. Uh, this is a little bit nicer. H squared. This is going to be less than 9.6, looks like. No, I did that wrong. H squared plus 8 squared. I was talking at the same time. Equals 20 squared. So from that, I'm going to find out that H is supposed to be the square root of minus 8 squared. Okay. Square root of 336, which is not nice. The square root of 336. It doesn't say exact. It doesn't. If you wanted a number on that, in case you just couldn't stand it, it's 18.3. But 336 on its own, uh, I can divide by 4, I can divide by 4 again, and then I'm done. So 336 divided by that, I get okay, 336, which reduces to, that's a 6 by the way, 21 I can't do anything about, but I can, I can divide this by 16. Okay. Total surface area. Well, that's going to be for part C. This was part A, by the way. This is part B, of course. Uh, part C is lateral area plus a base. Lateral area is half PL plus the hexagon area. Half P is 6 times 8. L I already found. It's um, 8 square root 6. Area of the hexagon, okay, it's 6, well, you can do, you know, let's do half AP. Uh, area of this is half AP. Apothem's not bad, it's, uh, sorry, perimeter's not bad, it's 48, but apothem is going to be, like, this distance here, and if these are 8, that's 8, this is going to be 4, right here, and this is 4 square root 3, so apothem is 4 square root 3, done that a lot times perimeter, which again is 48. Okay, calculation time. Uh, 24 times 8 is 192 square root of 6 plus 96 square root of 3. Now, can I combine those? I've got the square root of 6 here, square root of 3. Not really. Um, I could, like, pull in a 2 here and call this square root of 6 or something like that, but I don't want to... Yeah, you know what? I wonder if some calculator would do that. This is kind of weird. I could actually sort of unreduce this a bit and and divide this, uh, divide a 4 off of this and stick it inside, make it a square root 6. Uh, 
I don't know if a book would do that or not. I would stop here, but just for fun, I want to take a little side trip here and go. Um, 96 divided by 4 is 24. I could call this 24 square root 6. 24 square root 6 is the same as... No, that's not true. I did that wrong. I should divide that by... Oh, forget it. Okay, stop here. You never do that. We'll stop here. Actually, if you want a decimal for all that stuff, I can do that too. 192 times the square root of 2 plus 96 times the square root of 3 is about 437.8. Okay, that's answer part C. Uh, can I fit D in here in the space? I bet I can. D, oh yeah, volume Z. Volume is one third times the area of the base, which I know, 96 square root of 3. That's why I didn't reduce it. I don't want to mess with that. Yeah, how would you do that? Get a 2 in there? It's actually a square root of 2. I have to divide 96 by 2? 96 square root 3. I'm just talking to myself now. 96 square root 3, is that the same as 48 square root 6? No. Okay, I'm not, I don't know what I'm doing. All right. Uh, blah, times the height, which I found out, A to F. That uh, was good. That was the square root of 336. No, actually, you know what? I'm not going to call it that. I'm going to call it 4 times the square root of 21. All right, so this is 96 divided by 3 times 4. That's 128 times the square root of 63. Some cool um, square root simplifying here. I want to figure that out again. I wonder if I can add those together. I bet I can't. I could divide this into square root 2 times square root of 3 and then factor it out. Yeah, it's not going to combine. Okay, square root of 6 and square root of 3 are two different. Uh, 63, of course, can be divided by 9. So I can pull a 3 out of that. I'm going to have square root of 7. And 128 times 3. Who knew we're going to get a square root of 7? Nothing else is done. Also, that the volume here is 384 times something, and there's a 384 there. Very cool. Uh, I love math. Time to move on. Just to make myself feel better, I did actually make a little bit of a improvement there on uh, the simplification of, of part C. It's a square. This you can actually divide this by 96 square root of 3. It turns out kind of nice. It's square root of 2 square root 2 plus 1, but that's not what you're supposed to do. Uh, decimal on that would have been fine. Okay, what's weird about this problem? Okay, we have a we have a uh, hexagonal uh, prism that's meeting a circular base of this of this cone. Now wait a minute. This on this side of that that you know this I'm talking about this face right here. It's a very questionable face. On this side of the face, it's a it's a hexagon, and on this side of the face, it's a circle. So like there's something going on here at the edges. If you look really close at, at how a uh, how the circular cone kind of surface of the of a pencil meets the hexagonal sort of barrel part. This is not a straight line. It actually kind of is wavy because uh, because of that fact. Because there's these weird corners along here that I actually don't meet. Um, so if you're like me and you're bothered by that, uh, that's too bad because they're saying, "Oh, don't worry about it. Let's just pretend that they match up." That's not a circle on this side. It's a hexagon. So uh, I apologize for whoever made this problem, but it wasn't me be really hard to figure out the actual volume with that weird kind of curvy surface where the cone meets a meets a prism but um, you can ignore that just pretend it's it's uh, simple I guess because the the area and the volume of that little sort of error zone would be really small anyway so it's not a huge deal but it's you know in this in this chapter on exactness it kind of bothers me all right the jumble pencils main body is the shape of a hexagonal based prism if the radius of the pencil is two uh, which is there both the circle and the hexagon so that's from the if, you know, if we actually have okay here you wouldn't argue anything about this not being a hexagon that's obviously a hexagon radius of the hexagon so from the center to the corner of the hexagon that's also supposed to be two uh, and the lengths are given find the volume of this pencil okay so for volume that's great if they asked to do surface area you'd you know you'd want to punch a kitty too but it's not like that so we have basically I'm gonna start at the I'm gonna start here and work my way that way I have the volume of a cylinder the sort of eraser section plus the volume of the hexagonal barrel stick part, plus uh, the volume of the cone tip. This cylinder is area of the base times height. The hexagon is area of the base times height. The cone is one-third of its base times the height. Now, these are all different bases, maybe, and these are all different heights, perhaps, so you got to be careful. In the cylinder, we're talking about pi r squared, where the radius is 2. The height of that is 1. Hexagon, we have area of the base. Okay, here we go. We have a hexagon with radius 2. I think I'm going to do half AP on that. Half times the apothem. Oh, boy. That would be 1. If this is 2, that's 1. This is square root of 3 times perimeter. And these are all 2, right? 
Yeah, it has to be. If that's 2, these have to be 2. So the perimeter is 12. So this is 6 square root 3 times the height, which is 12, plus 1 third area. The base of the cone now is pi r squared, and the height of the cone is 2. We are at calculation phase. This is 4 pi. This is 72 square root 3. And this is not pretty. This is 8 thirds pi. Uh, I can kind of add the pies first, I guess. This is how many thirds? That's 12 thirds plus 8 thirds is 20 thirds. Plus 72 square root 3. So there's there's really no common anything I can do there. And you can kind of see this is the circular stuff and this is the hexagonal stuff. If you want that as a decimal, I get 145.65. Not sure which way to be asked, but if you weren't doing this this way on the way and you just want to know the answer, that's what I get as a decimal. Okay, uh, that was the end of that last page. Here's here's the actual next page, which is from another document from someone else. And I first looked at this and thought, oh, that starts easy. Let's move on. Then you look closely at this thing and go, wait a minute. This is not pretty. I mean, this is uh, not a regular pyramid at all. Find the surface area. Well, you cannot do stuff like this here. No way. This is not a regular thing. This This has a side length of 10. This has a side length of 9. This thing is n by nowhere even close to the center of that rectangle. Okay, so really what we have to do here is square plus triangle plus triangle. I mean, we just have to build this thing out of paper. We have to cover one thing at a time because they are all four different. Uh, I don't know what you want to call the four, the four triangles. Um, I'll call them front, back, left, and right triangles. I'll refer to the left one as the one on this side and the right one is the one on this side, and then the, sort of the back and the front. It's hard to see in two, in two uh, dimensions what I'm trying to label here on a, on a three-dimensional figure, but I think left and right and front and back are not too bad. This R stands for right, not rear. B doesn't stand for back, it stands for or base, it stands for back. Okay, so hopefully this picture makes sense. All right, so this rectangle is 9 by 10. Great. No problem. The front triangle, hey, okay, it has... Um, we need to know the base and the height of that triangle. Well, the base is 9. That's not so bad. But what on earth is the height of the triangle of that face, you know, that face of the triangle? Well, it goes from here up the front face of the triangle, and it hits the vertex here. That's that's the, the sort of the slant height we're looking for on that side. Well, I'm supposed to probably assume that these are right angles here at the center, so that's a right angle. So this is, this is a right angle on the floor, and if I did this, this would be a right angle here. I think that's a safe assumption and quite frankly there's no other way to do it so that could have been left out of the directions but I'll tell you right now if I if you get this problem you'll know that that the the, the distance from this point here to this point here is exactly the height of that front face on the ground now what is that height of that that face there well that's also the hypotenuse of a right triangle connected to the center point here where the legs are 8 and 8 so this height here is 8 square root of 2 because that is a 45 45 90 triangle so then the next triangle, let's do the back triangle. Uh, different height, actually. That, first of all, the base is the same of that triangle. That's still 9. But now we have an 8 and a 2. And then when I connect that hypotenuse from here to the top, gosh, that's hard to see. That would be, you know, this. That height up the back is that big, which is 64 plus 4. That's the square root of 68. OK, this one has a height of square root 68. And I'm labeling the height. Actually, the left triangle over here has a base of 10 and a height of, same trick, now the, 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 the height goes from here to the top, and that is a hypotenuse of an 8 and 3, so that would be the square root of 64 plus 9, which is 73. And the right triangle, again, has a base of 10, but its height is the hypotenuse of the 6, 8 triangle. Finally, something nice, it's 10. Great. Okay, so I have 90 plus half base times height plus half base times height. I'm about to run out of time. So there's one more step. I realized that the 68 could be reduced to uh, 2 times the square root of 17. Uh, let's keep going. And the next step, about the only thing you can do, the only like terms here are the 90 and the 50. You can call that 140, but then it's calculator time for the approximation. And it all comes out to be something like that. All right, time for the next video.